Good evening. Thank you for your patience. Sorry about the technical difficulties. These things happen from time to time. Um, just a reminder to turn off your cell phones or put them on silent so it doesn't disturb the message. And if we could bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for another night we can gather together with your people around your word, Father. In peace and safety, Lord, thank you for your protection. Thank you for your guidance, Lord. Pray, Father, you just open our hearts to receive the message tonight. Pray that you would challenge us, Lord, and help us to apply these things in our lives so that we can get other people saved, Lord, and growing in the grace and knowledge. I pray, Father, for our sister Pat tonight, Lord, who's suffering some type of illness, Lord. Pray you would just comfort her heart, Lord, and heal her, Father. Pray you would just rehabilitate her so she can come back to the body, Lord. Pray also, Father, for those that are going through adversities, Lord, and struggles in the body. Pray you just be with them and comfort them in a special way. Pray you bless all that we do tonight. Pray you bless Pastor John. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, just a couple announcements. Um, the men's ministry will be starting back up tomorrow night at 7.30 here in the chapel. Um, we invite all you guys out. It's a great time to be around all the brethren, get into the word. That's tomorrow night at 7.30. And the women's ministry will be starting next month, February 16th. That'll be Tuesday at 6.30. And that's going to continue on every third Tuesday of the month. Something to look forward to for the women. And also, um, this coming Sunday... For the teachers in the prep school, there's going to be a practice after church. Just a reminder for those people. So be ready for that. And with that said, we're going to do an a cappella. Oh, we yeah. okay. So uh, okay. So um, we have uh, some technical difficulties. So we'll do a song, but it won't be on the screen. So if we could stand, praise the Lord. i 
may be seated. Children can be dismissed to the classroom. Now it's my honor and privilege to introduce our pastor tonight, Pastor John Ritchie. Tonight. Okay. <coughs> Before we begin, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Before we begin, I'd like to have a word of prayer, but I'd like you to take your Bibles and just please turn with the Ephesians chapter 1, and then we'll go to a word of prayer. Ephesians chapter 1, and then we'll pray. Has everybody got Ephesians 1? That's where we're going to, that'll be our jump off point for tonight. Uh, we're going to be without the services of our PowerPoint, but uh, we'll just muddle along without it, okay? Let's bow our heads. Father, once again tonight, we are so grateful and so thankful, Lord. For this opportunity to gather together with the people of God around the word of God and to the name of our risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, tonight I pray that you would challenge our hearts through the things that we're about to note and study, that we would be serious students of the word of God, true disciples who not only hear the word but become doers of the word. And I pray tonight, Lord, that the things we study concerning spiritual blessing, temporal blessing, all the fantastic blessing and reward that you have promised, that it would serve as a motivator to our lives to face the suffering, the tests, the challenges of life, and to persevere that we might receive all that you have promised. I pray tonight, Father, that I could speak your word with humility and grace, with wisdom, with passion, conviction. I pray that I could speak with authority that your word deserves. And I ask that I could take the knowledge that you have given me on this important subject and make it clear and accurate and simple that your people might understand it and that they might be blessed by it. And if there be anyone here tonight that's not saved, I pray that your Holy Spirit would convict them of their sin and their need of Jesus Christ, that they might believe on him and receive the forgiveness of sins in eternal life. And I ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 will begin there in a moment. We're continuing in our study of looking at the plan of God. See, the cool thing tonight is you can't see any of the review, but I actually have it on my monitor. Why? Because I'm special. That's why. Okay. No, you're not all special. Don't kid yourselves. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. I'm in one of those moods. I don't know why it just came over me. Okay, but the good thing is I can see it. In our previous message, in our previous message, we noted some things about the plan of God. And it's very important to understand the plan of God if you want to be motivated in the Christian life. And we said that one of the blessings that comes to the maturing adult believer is invisible impact and blessing by association. That means that you will have an influence upon those around you that will lead to their blessing. And blessing by association also means that those in your periphery will be blessed because they are associated with you. This is fantastic, isn't it? Which tells you that the best thing you can do for people you love, okay, is not let them run your life, but seek Jesus Christ first above all else. Serve him and they will be blessed because you have become a mature adult believer through you, okay? And then there's, so that's a fantastic category of blessing. We also noted that undeserved suffering 
is also a category of blessing. And of course, the Latin proverb is misfortune does not always come to injure. You say, how can undeserved suffering be a blessing? It's a blessing because undeserved suffering keeps you growing as a believer. Undeserved suffering advances you spiritually. Um, you know, in school, you, you study, you study, you study. And uh, you learn all this information in whatever class you're in, whether it's science, history, math, whatever it may be, and you know sociology, et cetera, philosophy. And then all of a sudden, you know, and that helps you learn, right? It helps you learn, helps you develop. Your, your intellect grows. And then all of a sudden, one day you walk into class, and the professor or the teacher says, "Okay, we're going to have a a quiz, a surprise quiz, right?" And right away, everybody gets what? Nervous, right? Right? Because now is the time for you to show me what you have been what? Learning. Okay? And it's the same in the spiritual life. Uh, you can grow through slow, steady learning the Word of God in your daily life. Slow, steady pace. But when God wants to ramp up your advance, when God wants to advance you forward faster in the spiritual life, you know what God does? He says, let's have a pop quiz. He allows something that comes out of the blue that surprises you and shocks you. But guess what? It doesn't shock who? Him. It's part of his what? Plan. And it's undeserved suffering that comes into your life. And now God says, here's the opportunity to take all the stuff you've been learning, apply it, pass this test so that I can bless you even what? Greater. Because when God blesses us, he's happy, but he's not satisfied. Right? The one that bears fruit, he purges them that they may bear what? more fruit. He always wants to give us what? More. So don't be satisfied and realize that undeserved suffering comes into your life and is actually a blessing. You say again, how can it be a blessing? It's a blessing because it advances you what? Forward in God's plan spiritually. It's a blessing because it propels you forward. It, in it increases the rate of your growth. Okay? So it's very important. And then we noted as we said previously, that misfortune does not always come to injure. If you handle the adversity and the testing properly, what's going to happen? It's going to produce something in you. It's going to produce greater spiritual growth and a greater capacity to be blessed. Imagine that. The suffering itself, many times Christians look at it as woe is me. And of course, we all have those moments, right? We all do. But when that happens, don't stay there regroup right and say all right lord what are you trying to show me what are you trying to teach me and and what do i have what have i learned that i can now what apply to this situation right so uh handling adversity it, it propels us forward if we handle it properly right if we handle it properly we will grow we will grow and guess what's going to happen we will gain greater capacity and we will be blessed all right Okay, let's look tonight now at something that I really want to uh, spend a little time on. And it's, it's this principle of reaping what God has sown. Okay? Get that down? Now, we've all, we've all heard about reaping what you sow, right? But what we want to talk about tonight is this area of these blessings that we have been discussing in this study is really about reaping what God has sown already for us. God has a plan to bless our lives, okay? Uh, the scripture is pretty clear about these things. I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the what? Living, right? He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or what? Think, right? It tells us, therefore will the Lord wait that he might be what? gracious to us. He's waiting to bless us. God's plan is a plan of blessing for his children. Of course, it includes what? Some testing and some adversity, sure, in different seasons of our life, but it's a plan of blessing. Okay. What that tells us is that God has already planted some blessings that are going to come, a day is going to come when it's going to be time to receive the harvest of those blessings in our life. When you plant, you plant something and then you what? You tend to it, you water it, the sunshine, you weed it, you prune it. You wait what? Patiently 
and it what? Grows, and then all of a sudden, some, one day comes where it's now what? Come to fruition, and it's ready to be picked or harvested, and, and what? Joy. Can you enjoy a tomato that takes 90 days to grow after 60 days? After 65? After 42? It's got to go the full what? Time, right? There's no shortcuts. And in our lives, God has actually sown. He's planted some blessings in his plan for our lives. Okay? And we looked at them, right? Spiritual blessings, temporal blessings, invisible impact, blessing by association, undeserved suffering, right? God has already planted some seeds of blessing for every one of our lives. To reap the harvest, we have to grow spiritually so that at the right time, we, when we have the capacity, God can what? Give us the harvest, that we can reap that blessing and enjoy it in our lives. But I want you to understand something, that right now, and here's the sad thing, there are going to be many Christians that when, when, when this life is over and we get to heaven and we go to get our reward, they're going to be saved but as by fire. All their works are going to be burnt up because they remain carnal. They didn't grow. They stayed under false systems of spirituality. They got distracted. Other things were more important. They didn't value what God promised or weren't motivated by it. And therefore, the Lord is going to show them, look at your life. This was my plan for you. I had all this blessing in different categories. And everybody's different. Not everybody's going to get the same. But I was going to give you something that was tailor-made for you and your happiness. And it would have glorified me if I could have given it to you. Because it would have meant that you executed my plan in the devil's world. And that's a slap in the devil's what? Face. You see, that we'll find out in the study, the devil also promises blessing to those who what? Do his will. Okay? Not everybody that's blessed is blessed of God, folks. The God of this world, Satan, can also bless people. But I wanted to give you this, all these blessings at different what, seasons in your life. But look, you never reaped the harvest because you had to go, you had to come down this road a ways and you didn't want to travel it. You didn't want to take my word seriously. You didn't grow. You never developed a prayer life. You didn't turn away from sinful things and distracting things. You wouldn't let go of people who are hindering you and other hindrances in your life. So you remained bogged down in baby Christianity, carnality, and I, you never gained the capacity that would have allowed me to let you reap this harvest that I sowed, that I planted for you. You starting to get the picture here? Reaping what God has sown. David said something interesting. Remember in the Psalms, he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. We talked about how there's so many people chasing after promotion in life. Chasing after what? Blessing. And we use the term promotion. You know, it could mean promotion in your career. But promotion in life simply means bettering where you're at. Or receiving what? A blessing that betters your position, right? That's promotion. Promotion could be as simple as meeting the right man or the right woman. Right? Or it could be as simple as getting a better job. It could be as simple as being able to uh, move to that geographical area where you always wanted to be and have your ideal home. Or whatever. Whatever it would be that make you happy. That's promotion in life, right? Yet there's so many people seeking to promote themselves. Okay? Trying to reap what they're sowing. Okay? Instead of allowing God to be the one that promotes them. Because see, in God's plan, it's, it, it's not about self-promotion. It's about seeking Him first and then he'll add things what does it say in Matthew about our needs it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what righteousness. righteousness and all these things shall be added and I was talking about basic needs but you could apply it also to what these blessings we're talking about if you seek God first he will add the what blessings but there's so many people seeking the blessings and they're going to miss out on what reaping the harvest of what God has sown Think about that for a minute. Ask yourself in your life, am I seeking to promote myself or am I seeking God? If I'm seeking God, the day of my promotion will come. If I'm seeking to promote myself, I'm actually delaying my what? Promotion in life. Do you understand what we're talking about here? Okay. Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, I want to talk about reaping what God has sown. Look at verse number 3. Speaking of our position in Christ, 
uh, in fact, let's read verses 1 to 3. Paul says some fantastic things. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, now note that, right? Past tense, hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in what? Christ. Scripture tells us that God has already blessed us with every possible spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Of course, uh, the major aspect of these spiritual blessings has to do with our position in Christ, right? Who we are in Christ. New creatures, uh, redeemed, justified, declared perfectly righteous, accepted in the beloved, forgiven, some fantastic things. Made what? Part of his body in union with Christ and so many other blessings we could talk about. But part of these spiritual blessings is the fact that God has a plan for our life designed to bless us because the scripture says he's waiting to be what? Gracious. Scripture says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or what? Think. The scripture says delight thyself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your what? Heart. So this part of this spiritual blessing it's already been what? Planted. It's just awaiting the day of what? Harvest. But we're never going to get to the place where it'll be harvested in our life unless we are growing and taking our walk with the Lord seriously, seeking Him with all our hearts, motivated to want to learn, applying His Word to our life, seeking His will, turning from sin, trusting Him through adversity, and in the details and challenges of life. If we're not doing that, we're not going to grow and mature to where we can get to the place to, to reap these spiritual blessings that have already been what? Given to us. Are, are you with me so far? Go me to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. So God hath blessed us. You see, now you think about it. You, you know, in, uh, in, in the New Testament, in fact, you know, why don't we just... Oh, if you're at Second Peter, just hold it, but come back with me to Galatians for a second. I'm going to show you a principle. Okay, I'm going to show you a principle. Galatians chapter 4. And I, I've mentioned this before, and I'm just going to, you know, like as, as usual, we repeat a lot of things, and we make no apology for that, because that's how you learn. Um, you know, when I went to school as a child, uh, they taught by what they call rote, R-O-T-E, and that meant you repeated stuff. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Why? Because that enables you to what? Remember things. Uh, it's like when you go in the military. They make you carry around your rifle. They tell you, give it, a, give, it, give, it, give it at the name of your girlfriend. Carry your rifle around with you everywhere you go. Take it apart, put it back together. Take it apart, put it back together. Do it blindfolded. Do it in the dark. Do it when you only got a minute to do it. You know. And what happens? By doing it over and over and over again, you know that weapon inside what? Out. Right? It becomes part of, of your training, okay? You gain the capacity to be able to identify all the parts and know the functionality of that weapon so that you can use it under any type of duress, right? It's the same with, with teaching and preaching the Word of God. Repetition is very, very important. Now, a person who comes to Bible class says, guess what? You ain't never going to get any, any blessing like that. Your attitude stinks, to high heaven okay that attitude will never help you grow spiritually okay there needs to be an eagerness to want to seek the Lord and learn his word and a thirst for his word and there needs to be a humility that is teachable that says I have to humble myself and submit myself and expose myself to a prepared pastor who can help me learn his word and, and be respectful and show up face to face best I can now look here in Galatians chapter 4 here's a, here's a principle actually chapter 3 did I say 4 I meant 3 okay if you look down at verse uh, number 24 it says wherefore the Lord was our schoolmaster the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith but after that faith has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster 
So he raises the, the principle of the schoolmaster, the Greek pedagogue, the tutor. Go over to chapter 4, verse 1 and uh, 2. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the what? Time. Appointed by who? The father, right? Okay, now what's he talking about? He's talking about the situation where a father who was you know, fairly wealthy would put aside an inheritance, quote, blessings, right? What does the word blessing mean? Something that makes you what? Happy, right? All right, so if your father was wealthy enough to say, well, I've got this nice house for you, and I've got a hundred grand in the bank, and it's building up interest, and I got that nice uh, Corvette and uh, some other nice things, but it's, it's all for you, but you can't have it until you reach age 24 or 25 or 30 because that's when you will be mature enough for me to be able to convey this to you and you'll be able to handle it without what? Screwing up your life. And you'll be able to enjoy it without it messing with your head and, you, and you're getting big-headed and arrogant, right? And until you get to the place where you are mature enough to handle these things, you, they're yours, I've blessed you with them, but you can't enjoy them. You have to wait. So I will assign a tutor, a pedagogue, a teacher, a schoolmaster, whose job it is to train you in the proper etiquette and the proper protocol, the proper manners, the proper education, so that you will know how to conduct yourself, so that you will grow up to be a wise, mature young man who I will then be able to trust with these fantastic blessings that I've already blessed you with, but you can't, you can't enjoy them yet. See? Well, God has done the same for what? Us. Right now, folks, there are some fantastic blessings that God has put aside for each one of you. Okay? And we showed you the categories. I will probably say this. Three quarters of the people that hear this message will never enjoy all those fantastic blessings. Why? They will not take their walk with the Lord serious enough to grow and go through what they have to go through. See, the devil, those who get serious, the devil will knock them out with just some adversity. He'll throw some testing, some adversity at them, some pain, some suffering, and you know what it'll do? It'll knock them for a loop, and they'll just go and hide and say, I'm waving the white flag. Please stop. Or they'll hide and say, call me when it's over. Okay? Right? And they will miss out on some fantastic things. And others will get distracted with life, career, money, man, woman, whatever. Entertainment. They'll get distracted. Or their own rotten, ornery, miserable attitude will keep them from receiving it because they just won't apply what they're learning. God says to forgive, they want to be bitter. God says to be kind and gracious, they want to be mean and ornery and justify it. So you know what? They're just never going to grow, okay? Well, there's all these reasons, right? Okay, but here's the truth of the matter. The inheritance has been put aside, folks. It's already been put there, Okay? God has already blessed you. He's already sown a harvest. He wants you to reap that harvest in your life. But to reap that harvest, you have to take his word seriously and grow and mature so that he can convey to you at the exact right time in your life the desired blessing. Most people are trying to chase the blessing themselves. Now go with me, if you will, to 2 Peter chapter 1. The condition of the blessing which you have already been blessed with is capacity. Remember that from a previous study? We said the key to the conveyance of these blessings is capacity. Capacity, capacity. Spiritual growth, spiritual maturity. Okay? Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Look what Peter says. And this is something fantastic. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us 
through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now you know something said right there before we read verse 3. It's very powerful. Okay? He's talking to believers because they've obtained the righteousness of God through Christ by faith. That's justification. But he says, grace and peace be what? Multiplied. Every believer has been what? Graced and blessed to a measure by God already, just by the fact that they're what? Saved. But you notice something? He's talking about grace and peace. And of course, the word peace in the Greek, irene, it, 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 see, to us we say peace and it just means no confrontation. There's no what? Warfare going on, right? No tension, no consternation, no conflict. But even the Hebrew, shalom, right? It means more than just the fact that things are at what? Ease? That's a blessing in itself, isn't it? For some people, when you're under duress and all hell's breaking loose, just that what? Ease of, oh, this, everything's okay, is a blessing in itself. But in the Hebrew, shalom, and in the Greek, irene, and what's said here, peace, in the ancient world, peace did not just mean absence of conflict. It also meant prosperity. Do you understand that? You see? That's important to, to keep right here. When, when, when the Bible says God gives you, wants to give you peace, it doesn't mean he just wants things to be at ease in your life. It also means that he wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you in all your ways. Are you with me on this? But no, no, it says this grace and this peace, this prosperity is multiplied. So this is something that is laid on top of the blessing that you get just by believing and being saved. Right? Everyone who believes is in Christ, forgiven, justified, right? Accepted in the beloved, indwelled by the Holy Spirit, right? That's fantastic enough, eternally secure, Right? No longer condemned. All these fantastic things. But then he says it can be multiplied. In other words, it can be added to. Right? You can add to it something. But how does this extra prosperity and grace get added to our life? Look what it says. Through the knowledge of what? God and of Jesus our Lord. In other words, you need knowledge of God and of his son Jesus Christ to have these things what multiplied and he's not talking just the bare minimum of saving knowledge a mustard seed of faith that's not what he's talking about he's talking about that you have a serious increase in your understanding of God's word and God's plan of God's character of God's promises of the principles of scripture He's talking about, when he says, through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, he's talking about spiritual growth. The way these things are going to be added, grace and prosperity to our life, and multiplied in our life, which is fantastic blessing, comes through understanding God's word, learning it, and applying it to our life. Not just learning it, because that's the beginning, but it, there's a lot of folks who probably will sit in this church and learn a lot of the Bible who are never going to experience those blessings. Because they won't apply it. They still want to be the same old, mean old, honorary, cantankerous, lazy, slothful, I mean, <coughs> bitter, vindictive, petty, childish, silly, frivolous people they've always been except now they just got a lot of knowledge they got a big head full of a lot of information that does them no good to go along with all that and they're saved and they're going to heaven because you're saved by grace not by how good you are okay but there's no growth okay now keep going look at verse 3 according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What's godliness? Capacity. Growth. Godliness is growth in the character and image of who? Christ. It's capacity. And he says all things that pertain to life. What's he mean by that? Everything that we need to enjoy the abundant life. Did Jesus say 
the devil comes to rob and to steal right the thief and to destroy but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly John chapter 10 verse 10 if you need it for your notes did he say it he said it a more abundant life but this abundant life is contingent upon what growth it takes spiritual growth to enjoy that prosperity but here's the thing God has already sown it you don't have to worry about trying to get it there's so many people trying to figure out how they can promote themselves in life or get a blessing and that's not the answer the answer is seek him because all promotion comes from him he's got a time for your harvest he's already done the planting the watering the weeding now your job is to wait and trust and obey and grow so that he can give you the harvest do you get it it's not that hard but you have to believe these things and you have to be motivated by them and there are people sitting here right now you oh, we just went through dating and marriage you want that right man you want that right woman for your life and you heard about this blessings but as soon as the wrong one comes along and gives you a little attention prrrp, off you will go off you will go and you will forget about everything that I've told you and the devil will give you what a little pleasure for a season and in the long run you will be miserable again and have to backtrack and start all over again after you've delayed your life X amount of months, years, whatever from God's blessing but if you were focused on the Lord you'd say I don't have to try to get that man I don't have to try to get that woman God's got them for me I'm going to focus on who? Him. Seek Him in His Word. Execute His plan daily. I want to grow because He's got a harvest of blessing. And it could be, you know, romantically. It could be in your career. It could be with your children. It could be some material blessing out there. It could come in many different ways. Everybody's different depending on what, what would make you happy. God knows. He knows us better than we know ourselves, right? But there's something fantastic that he has for all of us. And yet, when we get to eternity, there's going to be all these what? Wood, hay, and stubble, and ashes in many, many, many believers' lives. Because they never grew up and never executed God's plan. They never reaped the harvest of blessing. You see, because every blessing that God can give you here has a corresponding reward in eternity. Because every blessing that God can convey to you here glorifies him. And it's a slap in the devil's face because you executed God's plan. He was able to do this for you. That's a slap in the devil's face. In the midst of the devil's what? World. You see? All right, now look at verse 3. It says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, capacity and what? Abundant life. How does it come though? Again, what are we confronted with? Through the what? Knowledge of Him. You see? That had called us to glory and virtue. These things come to us through the knowledge of who? God. Do you see it? And of Jesus Christ. Which means, and where do I go to find that knowledge? Right? Yep. This book has to be taught according to God's grace, rightly divided, comparing scripture with scripture by a prepared man. You know there are people sitting in churches right now under men who are not prepared, who are just being taught superficial, fluffy Christianity. They have no shot at ever getting to those blessings. No shot. People in churches that are legalistic, ritualistic, emotional, they have no shot because they're not being taught this book. Yeah, you know, a lot of people can read it and quote it, but to rightly divide it, it's a whole different thing. That takes a man who has a gift who's prepared. There's not a lot of them out there. But if you want one, God will get you to one. If you're here, you found one. Okay? But they're out there. They're out there. There's some good men out there doing it. But there's comparatively so, there's far more than aren't. Okay? Now, what's the problem? 
Now, now you've got to learn this word. So the first thing you do is get in a local church where you're taught the word, right? By a prepared pastor. Now, if you got that, that's a big step, right? Big step. But you can't stop there. You've got to be faithful to what? Expose yourself to the teaching of the word, right? But you can't stop there. Just showing up in church. Listen, you can sit in the garage all day long. You're not going to become a car, right? <laughs> You can do it week after week, month after. Just sitting in church does not make you a mature Christian. Showing up is important. It's a step in the right what? Direction. But you, when you leave these four walls, you've got to take this information that you've stored here and you've got to start applying it. You've got to become a doer of the word. And you've got to stop making excuses for yourself. Well, I can't forgive. That's just the way I am. You don't know what they did to me. I can't be patient. I'm just not a patient person. Well, don't you think it's time for some changes? Well, I get all emotional cry every time I have a problem. That's, that's just the way I'm wired. Well, doesn't the Bible say trust in the Lord? Like, in other words, at what point do you start doing what God told you to do? Don't sit under the illusion that somehow I'm going to have all this blessing if you are not becoming a doer of the word. Are you with me now? All right. But it's this book. This is it. This is the key. It's not delightful music. It's not a lot of fellowship. Those things are wonderful. They add to, to your experience, but they're not the core. The core is the word. That's where the growth comes. If, if, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you what? free okay now but notice what it says it says God has given us everything we're told here that God wants to multiply his peace his prosperity and grace in our life and it comes through the knowledge of himself and his son and then we're told that he gives us everything we need okay to become godly to gain capacity spiritual growth and to have an abundant life. He's given it. If we fail to receive the conveyance of these fantastic blessings in our life, we cannot say to God, you didn't make what I need available to me. You can't do that. You cannot blame God. He's made it available. Have you taken advantage of it? That's the question. Are you taking advantage of it? In your life. He has already said he gave us all things that pertain to abundant life and godliness. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Okay. So we've established this. God has sown some fantastic blessings. He's given us everything we need to be able to reap this fantastic harvest. Right? Go with me, if you will. I'm going to show you one more verse quickly. Galatians 6. Just one more verse quickly. As I just want to do it quick. <clears throat> okay. In a very familiar verse, but again, we like to repeat things. Right? To learn them. Look at verse number, if you will, 7 to 9. Familiar passage. The principle of what? Reaping what you've sown. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life everlasting. So, now we got another principle here. God has sown some blessings so that we could reap a harvest at the right time. We also have to sow some things in our life. Now, what are we sowing? Are we sowing the blessing? No. We're sowing good decisions. All right, did you hear that? I can't write it on the screen because I don't have my PowerPoint. Let's, let's go back a minute. God has already sown the blessing so that we can reap the harvest at the right time, right? When we gain the capacity. Then we're also told that we have to do some sowing. Now, our sowing can be to the flesh or our sowing can be to the Spirit. Because look at verse number 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we what? Faint not. Verse number 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. 
but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What's it mean to reap life everlasting? Does it mean that you're saved by doing good works and making good decisions? No. To reap life everlasting means to reap the blessings that go along with having and possessing eternal life. You got saved. God gave you eternal life, everlasting life as a gift. And he also laid up some blessings that go along with the fact that you possess everlasting life, which means you have a fantastic potential for a great life. If you execute God's plan and wait on his promotion and gain the capacity that you need through the knowledge of his word, or you can try to do it your way and promote yourself. Which will be frustrating. Right? And miserable in the end. Right? You getting the picture here? Now, he said you can reap the everlasting life, meaning that if you sow the right decisions in your life daily, you are eventually going to get to the point where you are going to start to reap the harvest of all the things that God has laid up for you because he gave you everlasting life. The moment he gave you everlasting life, his plan went into effect. Remember stage one of the plan? Salvation. Stage two, spiritual growth, blessing what? In time. Stage three, faithful service, blessing in what? Eternity. Well, you're in stage two now. Spiritual growth, blessing in what? Time. But because you already... Pass through stage one, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You received eternal life, and now you receive fantastic what? Potential. God blessed you. He says, I've got a harvest already sown. Now grow so that you can make, you sow those good decisions daily so that you grow and gain the capacity that you can reap this harvest that I've already given to you. You get this now? I think. You have this principle. But the choice is this. On a daily basis, you have to make a decision. Are you going to take up your cross, deny yourself, follow him, and become the disciple that he has called you to be so that you will grow and mature and develop the capacity to be blessed? Or are other things going to control your life? Fear. Bitterness, slothfulness, laziness, worldliness, carnality, lust, etc. Indifference, false teaching, pride, arrogance, selfishness. What's going to control your life? What's going to control your life? Some man, some woman, what people. What's going to control your life? What are the decisions you're sowing? on a daily basis there is an awesome amount of blessing available but you have to execute God's plan you getting this picture okay now let me show you something I want you to go quickly if you will to uh, first Peter chapter 5 In fact, hold off on 1 Peter. Do, do me a favor. Go to Psalm 34. We're going to go there. Then we're going to go to 1 Peter 5. Go to Psalm 34. I'll show you something. And, and folks, I'm, I'm preaching this message because I want you to be motivated to continue to persevere and pursue your spiritual growth. Okay? Because the devil, one of his tricks, like he did to the Hebrews, is with the details of life and with the problems of life and with the adversity and suffering that may come, Psalm 34, all right, the devil can wear you what? Down. Remember the Hebrews, they started the study, they were worn down. They were weary and well what? Doing. They were ready to, to fall away and go back to Judaism and just say, look, it, it was easier when we just went to the temple and offered sacrifices. This, you know serving the Lord is just, just getting too hot and they were going to miss out right that's why Paul wrote to them and said you know don't be weary God has not forgotten right after Abraham patiently endured he received the promise and he told him you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you might receive the what promise he was trying to encourage them get your motivation what back 
Get your motivation to grow and serve and draw closer to the Lord. Get it back because God's got some fantastic things that he wants to do for you. But they're contingent upon that growth. Right? They're already sown. Hath blessed. Past what? Tense. They're already there. Right? Psalm 34. Look at uh, verse 8 to 10. Look what, it, look what it says. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Right? Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Taste means trust. Believe. Are you going to believe that what God promises in his word is more real than what the devil's going to put in front of you? Right? So many people get deceived because they want something and they long for it, but they won't trust God for it. Or they see he promises it, but they just can't wait for it or trust God for it. And the devil puts something in front of them that they can actually touch and see, smell, right? Let me go for that. Because it's what? Here. And it's immediate. And they'll, tr they'll be like Jacob. Uh, not Jacob, uh, Esau. He traded the birthright, the blessing, his inheritance for a mess of pottage, a bowl of lentil stew. Now lentils are good for you, right? It's a healthy choice, right? I, I enjoy lentil. I've had lentil soup. It's, it's not that bad. It's very healthy. If you season it right, it ain't bad. Throw a little bit of, throw a little bit of pork in there with some of the fat, and it, it really gets better, okay? <laughs> then it's not so healthy. Some ham, you know, bacon, all that stuff, good. But here's the thing. Some of you folks that are listening to me, you have been trading the fantastic blessings of God, promotion in career, promotion in business, material blessing, wealth, the right man, the right woman. You've been trading it for a bowl of what? Lentil soup. Because you've been trying to what? Achieve it by your own power, your own strength, and forcing things. And you're going to be frustrated and you're going to continue. Let me put it this way here. You're going to continue to be frustrated because you already are. Mm -hmm. You can hide it. Praise the Lord, brother. Isn't God good? But we know what's going on when you leave here. And you're trading it. Jacob, he was able to get the blessing away from Esau for a bowl of stew, a bowl of lentil soup. Can you imagine that? Why? Because Esau was hungry and he couldn't what? Postpone his hunger. He had to immediately gratify his what? Flesh. Because he did not value, the Bible says what? The birthright. That's what it says in Hebrews. Because he didn't value what God promised and what he could see and smell and taste was what? Immediate gratification. He went for it. There's a lot of you sitting right here doing the same thing right now, and we'll do it in the future. You will ignore everything I've just preached on. And you'll stand before the Lord someday, and you'll have wood, hay, and stubble. Some of you have been doing it for decades. Some of you have been doing it for decades. Now, you're still alive means you still got what? Opportunity. You got purpose. You got a chance. It's never too what? Late with God. But you better stop making the right choices. You have to sow some things. You don't have to sow the blessings. Those have already been sown. You got to sow some good decisions daily. You got to make God the priority of your life. You've got to decide his word is more important than anything else in your life. And you have to stop pursuing and seeking him first above all else not the entertainment not the people not your own agenda to get what you want you need to be a hearer of the word who becomes a doer of the word and you need to stop making some changes to your old miserable army self okay look at the rest of this verse 9 oh fear ye the lord fear, fear the lord ye his saints for there is no want to them that fear him. There's no what? Lack. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Even the strong lion, there's times where he can't get enough food for himself and his pride. 
But they that seek the Lord shall not want what? Any good thing. You see that? If it's good for you, God's going to get it to you at the right time when you are able to what? Handle it. Growth, capacity. Let me show you something else. Psalm 37. And then we'll close. Uh, not with Psalm 37. We're going to close with a verse over in uh, Psalm 75. Psalm 37. Look at this. Simple verse. It says, verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good. Basically means believe what God tells you and execute his plan. To do good means to execute his plan. What's his plan? Spiritual growth. Hear the word, apply it. Right? Be in church. Study the word. Apply the word to your life. Develop a prayer life. Turn away from sinful things. Turn away from things that are distractions and hindrances to your growth. Make good choices daily that line up with God's will. Sow the right things that you can reap what goes along with everlasting life. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust Him. Believe that what He promises you is greater than what the devil is dangling in front of your what? Face. To take you away from God's plan. And then it says, So shalt thou dwell in the what? Land, and verily thou shalt be fed. What does it mean? To us today. So shall thou dwell in the land to the Hebrews, meant they would enter into the land of promise, which represented the abundant life for us. So when God says, trust him, believe his word, be motivated by it, execute his plan, you'll dwell in the land, he means you will get to the place where you will enjoy that abundant life that he promises, the blessings that he promises. You see? And it says, Verily thou shalt be fed. In other words, there will never be any what? Lack in your life. That's fantastic, folks. Look at Psalm 75. I'm going to give you a verse for your notes. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. We've read it many times. It says, we're going to Psalm 75, but I'm giving you 1 Peter 5, 6, and I'm going to quote it to you for your notes. It says, Humble thyself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He will exalt you in due season. Basically means accept where God has placed you and what he has given you at the moment. Execute his plan where you are. Wherever you are, execute his what? Plan. You could try to promote yourself to get out of where you are at, but that would be you promoting what? Yourself. The Bible says that he may exalt you in due what? Season. In other words, God says, I want to promote you at the right time. But right now, humble yourself under my mighty hand. Humble yourself where I have what? Placed you in what I have brought into your life. Accept it. Face it. Trust me. What is it you're going through? What is it you're facing? Trust me where you are right now. And I will promote you to something what? better at the right time so what's the principle real promotion all true promotion in life ultimately comes from who God right there's so many people uh, well there's a, there's a promotion coming up in my department I'm in good with my supervisor you know I'm, go I'm, gonna, I'm making all the right connections I'm going to get it well, the thing is, listen, that's promoting what? Self, right? The thing is, you, if God doesn't promote you as a Christian, you're not promoted because you could get that blessing on your own strength and then find out, be careful what you go after because it can come back to bite you in the rear end. All right? Remember Israel wanted the meat? Oh, we're sick of eating manna. Give us some meat. We want flesh. Right? God said, okay. And he sent the quail, right? And he sent so much quail that it, 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 it got to the point where it, they, they were vomiting at the, at the sight of quail, right? It became a stench in their nostrils. Be careful what you seek and get on your own because it can turn around and what? Bite you, okay? 
True promotion comes from God when you're ready to what? Handle it. Okay? That's why it's okay to wait on God and just trust Him wherever you're at. You with me? Okay, now listen, let's close here. Psalm 75. Now I love this. And here's our principle. It's God who promotes for the Christian. I don't have to schmooze and make the right connections and network. If God wants to bless me with a promotion, nothing can stop it from happening. And if it ain't God's time, I can schmooze and try to make the right connections. It is not going to be a blessing. It will ultimately bring sorrow because the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow. All true promotion comes from who? God. So relax. Chill out. He's got a harvest. It will come in his time. Look what it says. Here's the principle. I love this. You can read over this and just gloss over it and miss it. For promotion cometh neither from the east. The east. Now which way is that from where we're situated? That away, right? Nor the west. That's a that away, right? Pretty sure if you head that away, you'll end up in California or the Pacific Ocean, right? Nor from the south. That away, right? But God is the judge. He put it down one and he what? Set it up another. Notice he puts one down and he promotes what? another but now here's the thing promotion and a lot of Christians miss this you know heaven is on the sides of the what north heaven is north due north from where we're standing if you were to travel as far north as you possibly could go according to the bible you would bump your head against a sea of glass or ice according to Job Psalms and Revelation and if you could punch your head through the ice you'd land up in the throne room of what God the sides of what? The north. Notice what it says. Blessing doesn't come from the east. Blessing doesn't come from the west. Blessing doesn't come from the south. Why? Because blessing comes from the only direction that's left out is what? Blessing comes from the north, meaning it comes from who? The throne of who? God, who dwells on the sides of what? The north. That's a little tidbit for you. That's pretty cool. Don't forget it, though. Where does promotion come? From God, who dwells on the sides of the north. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, tonight we're grateful and we're thankful to have had this time to note and to study these things from your word. And Father, I just pray tonight, Lord, that you'd work in our hearts, Lord, in the hearts of everyone within the sound of my voice, to take you and to take your word and to take your plan seriously. And I pray that we would be motivated, Lord, to sow good decisions daily, that we might reap the harvest of blessing that you have already sown for us. Dedicate the last moment of the service tonight to anyone here if you're not saved. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Right now in the privacy of your own heart, your own mind, you can tell God I know that I'm a sinner. But I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for my sins and rose again. And Lord Jesus, I'm trusting you and you alone as my Savior, my Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Let's take a moment of silent prayer. Now, Father, if your Holy Spirit has spoken to anyone's heart tonight, and if they have believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you would give them assurance that you've forgiven them and saved them. I pray that you would reveal your love to them in a special way, and I ask that you lead them back to study your word, 
that they might grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray as we depart that you take the written word and make the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ, more real to our hearts and minds. And I ask these things in his name. Amen. Folks, it's been a pleasure. Have a great night.